Welcome to day two of Ascending with Ignatius. Before we can accompany Christ, we need a foundation. Saint Ignatius lays this foundation with two reflections, the first of which we will look at today. How and why were we created and what was God's original purpose in creating us? The text for reflection today are the first two chapters of Genesis. These are quite long, so rather than praying over these chapters line by line, it is recommended that you read the whole thing slowly and prayerfully and then do one of two things. One option is to choose a word or phrase that you can zoom in on for some extended reflection. Select just a word, a phrase, or maybe a small sentence or paragraph. The other option is to set the text down after reading the two chapters and use your imagination to reflect on the themes highlighted later on. The first two chapters of Genesis tell us the two stories of creation. Here we will read excerpts from the first of them. Let us begin this reflection by prayerfully taking these inspired words. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form or shape with the darkness over the abyss and a mighty wind sweeping over the waters, God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light was good. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Evening came and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air. God created mankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, Be fertile and multiply. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and all the living things that crawl on the earth. God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. Amen.
Here Father Mark reflects on how and why did God create us and what is our purpose. There are two creation stories in Genesis, the first in chapter 1 and the second in chapter 2. These two stories were told by the Israelites. They were written during the time of the Babylonian exile when the Israelites were invaded by the Babylonians and carried off into the foreign land of Babylon. Imagine them around the campfires at night. There was no television, no Netflix or internet, so the only entertainment was to stand around the campfires and tell their stories. If you ask an anthropologist about a culture's image of God, they might tell you to look at the culture's creation story. You know a lot about how people think of God by the way that they tell their creation story. Imagine these Babylonians and Israelites standing around their campfires and the Babylonians start to tell their creation story. It is a wild and violent story of the gods warring with one another. One god kills another god, splits open his belly with a knife and out of the belly come the guts. From the guts of this god come maggots and from the maggots come human beings. This is the actual Babylonian creation story. The Israelites are thinking, this is terrible. This isn't how we know our creation at all. This isn't the God that we know. So they, th- so they tell these two wonderful stories that we now find in Genesis. These stories tell us so much about our original purpose, the reason why God created us, and the kind of God that we Judeo-Christians believe in. The first story found above is written by the priestly author. We call this author the priestly author because it seems as though the author was from the priestly class and liked to talk about liturgy, putting everything into liturgical forms. This author wants you to imagine a great religious ritual. For them it would be in the temple and later the synagogue and for us it would be in our church. Imagine the most beautiful liturgy you've ever seen. Magnificent, Magnificent rituals with gorgeous music, a huge orchestra, and beautiful singing, processions and vestments in a stunning church. That's what the priestly author wants you to think about as he tells you the story of creation. He wants you to see the creation as a beautiful liturgy with God the creator as the presider. God says, let there be light, and light processes down the aisle into the nave of creation. Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters, every kind of fruit tree, every kind of living creature. Each thing that God calls into being processes down the aisle in this beautiful liturgy that we call creation. It's a gorgeous image and it's such a contrast to the Babylonian story that the Israelites were hearing. The God of the Genesis story is in love with his own creation, not merely an architect over it. Though God is certainly a brilliant engineer and builder as he makes all matter of creation, he is also a fanciful artist. Only an artist would create the little stars in the sky. God could have stopped after creating the darkness and the light and the dome of the sky and the earth. He could have created the sun and the moon and that would take care of our needs here on earth. But then, like a fanciful lover, he puts in the little speckled stars in the sky. God does the same when he creates the multitude of creatures on the earth. Only a God who is fanciful and in love and having fun with his creation would create silly things like ladybugs and roly-polies. This is the kind of God we have. A God who planned out this creation and does it out of sheer love, exuding his very self into the creation. If you imagine each one of these things being called into life and then processing down the aisle of this liturgy, you might think of a wedding. First you see the ring bearers and grandparents, then the court of honour, followed by the best man and the maid of honour. And the pinnacle, of course, is when the bride and groom meet one another in the aisle and process down to the altar together. What is the pinnacle of this liturgy in Genesis 1? God says, let us make human beings, and he creates humankind in his own image. This is when the trumpets blast and the timpani bangs the loudest, as humanity goes down the aisle of our liturgical procession. Procession. God keeps looking at his creation day after day, saying, it is good, it is good. Do you think the Babylonian gods, humans coming out of maggots, would say it is good? See the contrast here. The Israelites are trying to tell the Babylonians, no, this is how we were created. This is the way humans are created. Out of love, by a loving God, by a God who says, it is good of all creation and of humankind on the sixth day. He says, it is very good. Humanity is the pinnacle of creation, is very good. Then God sits in the presider's chair and rests. The second creation story found in the second chapter of Genesis is very different than the first. For example, 
Humans are created first instead of last in the second story. There are other differences as well, but what's interesting is that the God is the same. The image of God is the same image, fanciful in love and creating in a planned way. In the second creation story, we are introduced to God who is playing in the dirt. He's got dirt, dirt beneath his fingernails and from the dirt he moulds and shapes humankind, breathing his very life into that dirt. On Ash Wednesday, we receive the ashes and hear the words, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. It sounds a bit sombre on Ash Wednesday, but here, in that creation story, it's a beautiful image of a beautiful earth and beautiful dirt that springs forth life. God breathes his very self into us. Our life, the very breath coming out of our mouths, is the very breath of God. Truly, we are made in love. We are made from a loving God who thinks we are very good. Later, God sees that Adam is alone and lonely. Saying it is not good for humans to be alone, he responds by making us in partnership with one another. God creates us to be together with God and with one another. At one part, it says that God and Adam used to walk in the breezy parts of the day. This is a beautiful and romantic image of God and humanity walking together. I'm from southern Louisiana and I know exactly what is meant by the breezy parts of the day. August in Louisiana is hot and sweaty, but in the breezy part of the day, around 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the evening, as the sun is going down, it gets a little less oppressive and everybody comes out of their own house and sits on the porch or walks along St Charles Avenue. This is where you spend time, not with the people that you work with, but with the people that you care most about. So this image of Adam, Eve and God walking together in the breezy part of the day is a beautiful picture of how God intended us to be. Here we find our purpose. This is why God created us, to be together as a loving community with God and with one another. Later, of course, we hear the story of how humankind disobeyed. God goes looking for Adam and Eve in the breezy part of the day and can't find them. And because he loves Adam and Eve, he goes out searching for them. When God finds them, they are hiding. Why? Because we are ashamed, they tell him. And what does God say in reply? He asks, in essence, who told you that your nakedness was something to be ashamed of? We often think that God is scolding Adam and Eve at this point, but it may be more like a mother who hears the story of her little child coming back from school one day after being told by a bully something that made him feel ashamed. The mother says, who told you that? Who told you that this is the kind of God that we have? God loves us so much. Who told you that you should be ashamed of yourself? Who told you that you should be ashamed of your body? God loves our bodies. He looks at our bodies, minds and souls and says, it is very good. Notice what God does next. He sews garments. He loves his creation. He's heartbroken that they're ashamed of their bodies and yet they're stuck in their sin for the time being. And so what does God do? God sits down and sews garments for them so that they won't be ashamed anymore. We see this we see in this what kind of God we have. We see the purpose of our creation, the thoughts and the notions that God had in creating us. We see him playing in the dirt, creating the creepy crawly things, breathing life into us and saying, it is very good today. On this second day of the, treat, of the retreat, I'd like to ask you to spend the day reflecting on all of this. God still looks at you and says, it is very good. You are very good. Your body, your mind, your spirit, your soul. It is very good. Let us close our reflection with the passage again. God, beyond our dreams, you have stirred in us a memory. You have placed your powerful spirit in the hearts of humankind. All around us we
In the beginning, when God created the heavens and earth, the earth was without form or shape, with darkness over the abyss and a mighty wind sweeping over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw the light was good. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Evening came and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air. God created mankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, Be fertile and multiply. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and all the living things that crawl on the earth. God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. Amen. God be on your time, you are laboring within us. We are moving, we are changing in your spirit.